Greetings, everyone, and thank you for joining me. Today is episode eight of the R. Kelly Appeal TV. We are so grateful that you're here, and I'm your host, Shine Wisdom, and today is December 12th, 2021, and we're going to be talking about social media infringement privacy rights. And this is a new topic. Um, you know, everyone's moving into the realm of technology. And we want to make you very aware of what is going on and what is taking place and some things you should consider. Welcome um, to those who are, you know, helping to make the channel grow. Thank you for all the subscribers. And last week was the highest ranking podcast on the playlist. And this goes to show the gratitude that is being accepted based on the importance of this topic. So 2021 is almost at its end. And I hope we're all thinking about new and positive energy perspectives for upcoming 2022. This year was filled with major growth challenges, helping us understand we are all going through something as a nation. No one is exempt from this universal move. Knowing we are not alone in the battle for self-love and the maintenance that comes with self-care, it is important to know what you need to know in this new world of technology. In today's episode, I would like to share two concepts, and I'm going to incorporate Robert Sylvester Kelly's um, infringement opportunity that could come from posting information about this individual as Robert Sylvester Kelly and not as the pseudonym of R. Kelly. So um, I would like to share in the right of privacy and this topic needs to be clear when people create these content um, platforms such as Instagram, TikTok, social media platforms. And the Media Privacy Act will be reviewed today. We're going to look at what that means to those posting private information about individuals. And we're going to go over the four most common types of invasions of privacy and what that means to those just starting things out um, on this public platform that you may need to know in general. So let's get it. Let's get it. Someone posted the question, why would R. Kelly tell a stranger to share his life story on social media about his personal life and not receive any accolade or recognition that comes with the credit behind this information? So we're going to look at the social media platform of privacy when sharing information regarding a third party. And here's what we found in this week's research and being part of the youtube family since 2009 when i created my first youtube channel called emerald mystery radio during that time people had to honor what was known as copyrights your video would get infringed upon and reported if you used information that was copywritten and didn't give honor to the individual, didn't say that you had a contract to create this content, um, and then it was flagged and then eventually removed. Um, however, let's look at the case of R. Kelly as a public figure and not the man behind the public figure. So we're looking at the public figure, R. Kelly. He is the singer, performer, artist, king of R&B and he is the ego of Robert Sylvester Kelly okay all of his information is generated under this thing called copyright regarding R. Kelly and much of it has been erased from the top channels such as Vivo, BET, Billboard, um, all of those top ranking social sites so many social sites has already taken his music and pulled his videos. It creates an open field of suggestion to the public. With, with Kelly being convicted, his communal rights are even open to the public. Now the problem that one may have in the future is his private life being based on uh, infringements about truths and untruths provided within videos relating to social media content. 
So say, for instance, if one person has a right to share the life of Robert Sylvester Kelly with his permission, they will have to go through certain channels of law. They will have to secure themselves from a future lawsuit. And that's something that is just not a moral integrity situation here. It becomes a matter of law of fact that could hold up in court involving slander, defamation, infringement, etc. Now, this is especially important if he is released on a technicality. I would suggest watching some shows about internet laws, privacy acts beyond 2019. And even if a person creates a channel promoting unconsented information about another person and that individual finds out, even if the video has been deleted, one would never know who has already downloaded that information with hopes of something coming up at a later date that could expose private information that was publicly shared. People are very hungry for fame and a 10 minute place in a spotlight will be like an honor to many, many people. So being mindful of what is posted on social media about a person may be the number one alternative when considering if it should or should not be posted. So I, I definitely wanted to share that. Um, and I think that asking someone to post private information about an individual should definitely be a contractual agreement. Number two, some people feel that R. Kelly is a public figure and does not have any private life, especially after his convictions. So let me share some information that we researched as of December 22nd, 2019. And it was the Online Lawyers Association group that defined invasion of privacy as the unjustifiable intrusion into the personal, not public, life of another without their consent. However, invasion of privacy is not a tort or civil law or civil law on its own. Rather, it generally consists of four other distinct causes of action. Now, let's go back to what a tort is. A tort is defined as a wrongful act or an infringement of a right other than under, than under a contract, leading to civil legal liability. And this is what I want us to be mindful of because the new laws could possibly change and before you know it, you think you're doing something good and then, wow, you have a lawsuit on your hand. So states will vary on both whether they recognize these causes of action as well as what elements are necessary to prove them. So be sure to check your state law on infringement rights and social media rights. Um, maybe even talk with the lawyer and see if, you know, this is an idea that you're trying to promote. If it will, what type of area of law will you be able to stand on if someone files a lawsuit against you? Now let's look at the four most common types of invasion of privacy torts, and they are as follows. Number one, appropriation of name or likeness according to Cornell law. Now appropriation of name or likeness occurs when an individual uses a personal name, likeness or image without an individual's permission for commercial purposes. So when we look at Robert Sylvester Kelly, that is the appropriation of name or likeness to the king of R&B, R. Kelly. So as in the name, um, if the name is used or likeness thereof for a newsworthy purpose without consent for commercialization, it can be considered illegal. So according to internet law, defamation claims can be filed, especially if Kelly is exonerated from his charges, if the case is overturned, if the case is retried and he wins, or he wins an appeal. So be very mindful what we're putting out here during this empty time. Number two, intrusion upon seclusion. According to digital media law elements of an intrusion claim are as follows. An intrusion on seclusion claim is a special form of invasion of privacy. It applies when someone intentionally intrudes physically or otherwise upon the solitude or seclusion of another. So take for instance, in Robert Sylvester Kelly's case, 
people start to go out and begin doing their own research and doing interviews on individuals who said that they had a a, 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 like in his case a sexual count encounter and this this individual tells you everything about what goes on but nothing is in stone nothing that's defamation an individual can easily lie and um, defame another individual so if this is an intrusion upon privacy where more counts upon this individual's name becomes precedent then that breeds about a whole nother form or format of law that would be infringed upon so it's it's it, it, it i'm telling you it's a big situation it applies when someone intentionally intrudes physically or otherwise upon the solitude or seclusion of another in most states to make out an intrusion or seclusion claim an individual must generally do these four things First, the, the individual without authorization must have intentionally invaded the private affair of the individual. So did you overstep boundaries when you went to get the documentation that you received? Were you stalking? Were you looking in the window in the middle of the night and seeing something that wasn't supposed to be? Um, uh, uh, second, the invasion must be offensive to a reasonable person. So was this overstepping your boundaries when you, um, did some, when you committed a law in order to get this information to defame this individual, did you do that? And that could be held up in court. That could be something. Third, the matter that the um, defendant intruded upon must involve a private matter. So this must not be a public matter, something that we already know about um, an individual, and in this case, R. Kelly. Um, and finally, and finally, the intrusion must have caused mental anguish or suffering to the individual in question. So say, for instance, if someone had a conversation and said, I'm going to go ahead and post these videos up and I'm going to put money on your books and I'm going to give you, you know, the lifestyle you need to live in while you're incarcerated, our, um, Robert Sylvester Kelly. And then they go out there and they promote their channel um, on social media and does not do what the contract states. At that point, it's null and void. And say, for instance, if everything turns on um, to the point where the individual is able to file a civil suit, that could be possible. So we need to be very, very mindful. And a lot of this I found out myself as I was doing the research. So I'm going to really, really honor, you know, just not trying to get likes on a video. It's, it's, it's not about that. It's about giving the information and sharing with the, the, um, the society, the purpose behind what is being stated. And it should be of a helpful nature. It should always be of a helpful nature, not a hurtful nature. Number three, false light. According to the Digital Media Law Project, false light is one of the four categories of privacy torts. We've talked about misappropriation, intrusion, and we're going to talk about publication of private facts. But false light it places the individual in a false light that would be highly offensive to a reasonable person. And the author of that false, so falsivity could be in, in fault for publishing this information. So being very mindful, especially in, in, in an appeal situation, certain things that were stated against R. Kelly during his trial, that can come out to be misleading, um, false, put, putting him in a false light and um, taking information and using it to defame. And number four, the public disclosure of private facts. This one, I want to really take a little bit of time and talk about the elements of a publication or a private fact claim involves these elements. Number one, a public disclosure. So you must make it public. It has to, you can make it public through a conversation where a person says that you said something or you can upload it on a video or you can put it on a post. Um, or you could take a picture of it even. 
okay? But it has to be a public disclosure. You have to publicly disclose it. Number two, the facts disclosed must concern the private life of the individual, not their public life. So everything that we know about R. Kelly and the public essence of this situation, R. Kelly is not going to be a problem because that's public but it becomes a problem when it infringes upon his private life and that we need to make sure that we have the ability to talk about okay number three the matter disclosed must be one which would be highly offensive and objectionable to a reasonable person or ordinary of ordinary sensibility okay so say for instance if that individual is saying that you know is, is coming forth and defaming the character then at that point um of something that we have not heard that has not come out in trial that has not come out publicly um against the individual in question then um that right there is can be objectionable you know, so we can take that and say that that's a civil infringement upon our privacy rights on social media and disclosure must have been made intentionally, not negligently. So intentionally, you chose to upload it, post it. The individual chose to talk about it, to commit about it and to share detailed information that was of private nature. Um, especially in confidentiality type um, agreements where, you know, I'm telling you this to get this off my chest. I need you to know this or whatever. Um, that's why agreements are so very important because people can mislead um, another person because they're not clear on what they're desiring from the conversation or the confidential information. And number five, the matter disclosed must not be of legitimate concern to the public. So basically, um, it may not be something that the public even needs to know. Okay. So if you would like to learn more about social media privacy rights, contact your state or local um, court um, and get some relevant information on laws that pertain to your state and your situation as well. So the reason for bringing this information of privacy and defamation of character within um, social media content is to let you know that um, commercializing another's private life is illegal without their consent and contract or binding authorization. Now, yes, sometimes you may have a power of attorney that will use... Um, the opportunity to to promote certain things for you because especially those incarcerated and so that's very understandable but even in that position it still should be agreed upon in written form okay so i want to ask the question do you feel that robert sylvester kelly has a right not to have his private affairs displayed on social media by a stranger um remember the gail king interview when Kelly stated about the power of social media was one of his, I think, red flag keys for us to really pay attention. Well, you know, he only said a few things, but the major things he said was the most important and they were very vital, okay, and to our future. So he was absolutely correct that privatization within the sector of media exchange does have boundaries. People, however, who do not honor that privacy boundaries um, exist may have a lawsuit on their hands. And if and when the individual finds out that the information exists, they can take it and use it to their advantage in a civil suit. I watched a area um on court on a court show where an individual was posting videos of the uh took pictures of an individual posted up made money off of it and they took them to court and they literally won so that's something that i think we need to focus on too um going a bit deeper 
if one receives payment for untruthful information, private information that was not contracted and agreed upon by the parties, they can and should be sued. Thank you so much for listening, liking, and sharing this podcast. Thank you for all of your comments, emails, and calls. In our upcoming video, episode nine, we're going to be asking you what you would like to have researched on the R. Kelly Appeal TV uh, channel. A shout out to our background instrumental talents of instrumusic.com. And as always, keep it 100 and we will see you every Sunday, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, only on R. Kelly Appeal TV.